When we think of air-to-ground or air-to-air -air missiles used by fighter planes, we probably think, for example, of the Vietnam War or even much later in time to the 70s and 80s. But did you know that in the Second World War there were guided air-to-air -air missiles and also rockets? All of these used by houses to attack different targets in the air and on the ground. Today we will talk about all the models of missiles and rockets that existed in the Second World War, and above all, how effective these rockets were. Rocketry and missiles are concepts that were born almost alongside military aviation. Before we start talking about the early history of rocketry, we should know the difference between a rocket and a missile. In synthesis, a rocket is a self-propelled projectile that has no guidance, while missiles are self-propelled projectiles that do have guidance. In the air, obviously missiles appeared somewhat late. In World War II, and we will talk about them later, the first to emerge were, of course, the rockets. The first rocket that existed for air-to-air -air combat was used in May of 1916 in the Battle of Verdun. This was the Le Pure rocket. It was more like a firework rocket than anything else. It was mounted on observation balloons and on the wings of French biplanes. They had a long stabilizing rod and a 200-gram explosive head with a range of 110 meters. And although it sounds crazy, these were relatively useful. They served against the German Zeppelins and were even occasionally used to attack ground troops. Technology would continue a slow but uninterrupted development until 1939 where the first confirmed downing of an aircraft by a rocket would occur. In the Battle of Bakal King Gol in Mongolia between the Soviet Union and the Empire of Japan, a group of Polikarpov IR-16 cast destroyed 16 houses and three Japanese bombers, with the RS-82 rockets one of the first rockets to be used in combat aircraft. It had an impressive range of 6.2 kilometers. The RS-82s were first tested in 1932, but began to be used in Soviet fighters once the R-82 missile rail was developed. Versions for ground attack were also developed, the RS-132s to be used in the Tupolev SB bombers, both rockets having somewhat mediocre results. At 500 meters, the RS-82s had an accuracy of 1.3%, while the RS-132s, when fired at tank columns, had an accuracy of 3.1%, which was laughable. These rockets led to the development of multiple Katyusha rocket launchers, spawning a new branch of artillery. When the Second World War began, there seems to have been a boom in rocket development and the missile, the Germans being the main promoters of this new movement. The Germans invented the Gewehr Grenade 21 or BR-21 abbreviated. In 1942, the Allied bombers gathered in large groups so that their defensive machine guns created curtains of fire, which made it impossible for enemy fighters to approach them at no less than 500 meters. The solution to this were the BM-21. The BM-21 rockets had a maximum range of 1.2 kilometers, which allowed the Germans to attack at distances of around 1 kilometer, where the risk of being hit by defensive machine gun projectiles was really low. It was stabilized by rotation and was powered by an 18-kilogram solid fuel rocket engine, while its warhead weighed 40 kilograms. This generated a 30-meter diameter explosion and was activated by a contact fuse. It was mounted on the wing of many interceptor and bomber houses, like the FW-190 and the Mi-110, 210, and 410, even were used in their last months of service in the Mi-262. These were withdrawn because they were extremely slow. Being slow, they had a considerable ballistic drop making even their mounts have a 15-degree tilt to be able to reduce some of the drop when it was taken out of service. Many really interesting models emerged among them the R-4M, which was notably used by the Emmy. 262 people do not usually think about how technologically advanced the 1,262 were. These were not only powered by jet engines, but also had the first truly useful and effective rocket and missile systems in history. The introduction of the R-4M significantly increased the lethality of the Mi-262. When the Mi-262 were deployed, the Germans realized that it had a weaponry that limited the aircraft's capabilities. 
This initially had two MK-108 cannons. Of 30 millimeters, they were powerful with just four shots they could bring down an Allied bomber. These high-speed cannons were somewhat inaccurate, so the Mi-262 had to lower the flight speed to be able to increase the accuracy of the shots, becoming instantly more vulnerable. The R4-1000 were the solution to this problem, giving the possibility that the 1000 E262 could attack at very high speed. The R4-1000 had a speed of 500 meters per second, almost that of a machine gun projectile, and they had an explosive charge of 520 grams that generated an explosion similar to those of the BM-21. Its fuse was triggered by time and by contact, and its maximum range was more than 1,500 meters being small and light the Mi-262 could have. Several of these in the wings the mounts could carry. Twelve rockets in total and were made of wood, although it may seem curious as soon as they entered service. It was seen what they could do on April 4th, 1945, a B-24 bomber was hit in the center by one of these. Only the radio operator was the one who survived the shoot-down. The 30mm projectiles of the MK-108 cannons were explosive charges that penetrated inside the structures of the plane and exploded right there, as we said before. Only four of these shots were enough to shoot down a single B-24 because the R-4-1000 had a destructive capacity six times greater an R-1004 impact in the center was 100% lethal, while it could cause serious damage in the surrounding areas. The most notable use of these missiles was on March 18, 1945. 1,200 bombers were sent to reduce Berlin to rubble, escorted by 733 Allied fighters. Among all the planes sent for the defense of Berlin, 33 Mi-262S equipped with R-4 million missiles were sent. These shot down 13 heavy bombers, only losing two fighters in the process. So, technically, the effectiveness of the Mi-262s with the R-4M rockets was 6.5 bombers for each loss, which was quite impressive and really outstanding. Unfortunately for Germany, these rockets arrived very late and barely lasted seven weeks being used in combat. The last thing we could see from Germany in this field was also the most impressive, we are talking about the first guided missile in history, the X-4 missile designed for the Mi-2s, 6 2 This was huge. It was 2 meters long and weighed 60 kilos. This was made up of a fuse at the tip, then its 20 kilogram fragmentary charge in the center. There was its propulsion system, which was bi-liquid, and it had a compressed air tank to push the fuel to the engine at the back was the missile's guidance system also by the rear fins that provided orientation, and finally the main fins of this where the cables were connected. The guide was guided by three with seven meters of cables, and then an acoustic location system synchronized with the sound of the bombers guided him to them. Exploding in the proximity of these, during their tests they were quite effective, but they did not get to enter combat because they did not have time, and it is said that these, when stolen in the post-war period, gave rise to the first modern guided missiles. Rocketry is not just a concept that the Germans would have monopolized. For example, there are many examples on the Allied side. The Americans put rockets in the tails or in the front of their B-24 to protect them from the interceptors, the 1010 launcher. This was a triple rocket launcher that would have equipped the 1008 rockets introduced in 1940 and also used on land by the T-34 Calliope launchers mounted on the 1000-4 Sherman. These were reloaded inside by a loader and were operated by the gunner who also operated the rear anti-aircraft machine guns. Also, the P-47 Thunderbolts would carry these underneath for ground attacks. These rockets were generally very good. However, in the air they left much to be desired. They were relatively slow and only reached 900 kilometers per hour with an explosive charge that barely equated to 1.9 kilograms of trinitro toluene, for the air even more powerful. Rockets were developed, the H-bar also known as the Holy Moses, were the successors of the also not so effective but useful F-bar. These were the most advanced rockets that were used in the Second World War, probably arriving for the end of 1944. The battlefields, their explosion had a trinitro toluene equivalent of 3.7 kilograms, and they were even so good that they were withdrawn from the Air Force inventory until 1965, which was incredible. 
Considering it was a Second World War rocket, as you can see, rocketry and missiles were technologies existing in the Second World War. Being very impressive as all sides extensively use these emerging technologies to their advantage. Thank you very much for watching this video and of course see you in the next one.